Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the Focal Grand Utopia Evo. This is my personal pair, and I want to talk to you about not just the speaker, but what makes the engineering in the speaker different than other things that you have seen. Stuff that you are not going to see anywhere else from any other manufacturer. Oh man, I never dreamt I'd be able to have a speaker like this in my own personal system, right? And I got to be honest, if I had a little tube integrated amp and a pair of good moderately, I'd be happy the rest of my life. You know, I mean, I'm at a place right now where the important things to me are my wife and my dog, but I gotta say, I dig music and I feel so grateful to be able to continue to play and learn new things and then learn about these and meet the people from Focal, which is such a passionate company. They were founded in 1979 uh, by a guy, I'm gonna butcher his name, Jacques Mahoul. Uh, the French gentleman, and they started as a research and development company, right? R&D. What do I always tell you about products that I love? What do I tell you? I always talk about skip the bullshit, the magic boxes, the things where there's so much fluff in high-end audio, parts and engineering, parts and engineering, and that's what these people have been about along with passion because I have met them and they are incredibly passionate about the products that they build. So, you know, there are speaker companies today that are, these are not inexpensive, right? As of the time of making this video, these are about $279,000 a pair. And I will say that they are a $279,000 bargain, right? That should light up the, uh, the comments section of this video. What do I mean by that? Well, because there's, and I hope they don't start jacking shit up. I mean, they, they try to keep it real. Look, you have to amortize all the engineering costs by the number of them that, you can't just say, oh, this costs that much, that costs that much. You can't do that. There's a lot to bringing products to market. And I understand that better than, than most people, you know, with some of the things that I've done in my, my own history. But, uh, this is a company, look, there's companies making speakers now that are over $650,000 that are not, if you really get real about it, let's get real about it, that are not really going to be as good as this loudspeaker and certainly don't have the technology. But not just that, some of these companies would not even exist were it not for JM Labs. That's who Focal was back then. JM Labs was making speakers for other manufacturers and making them rich. But what happened was this, they are uh, obsessed, just like Enzo Ferrari was obsessed with car racing. Focal and, their, and JM Labs at the beginning, they were obsessed with coming up with new technologies and doing things that had never ever been done before, at least not the way that they do. And that's what I want to tell you about. So please stay with me through the whole video because we're going to open your eyes to a couple of things. I'm going to break it down to a few parts, okay? The first one is the base driver. This is what's called a field coil base driver. That means that there's a control box that actually plugs into the wall. Why would they do that? Well, back in the early days of loudspeakers, that's pretty much what everybody used. Even if you had a Philco tabletop radio, it was using, uh, at least not, well, most of them were using field coil speakers because magnet technology had not really caught up to audio back then. You didn't have uh, 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 ferrite magnets. You didn't have uh, Alnico. I mean, that stuff didn't exist. So you had to do something that, you know, plugged into the wall and able to get enough efficiency out of the speaker so you'd be able to hear it. And you didn't have very high power amplifiers either. You needed all the help you could get. So why are they using old technology uh, to address new problems? Well, because just because nobody really does this anymore, they don't do it because it's expensive and it's difficult. That's why. There are a couple of other high-end manufacturers that do use fuel coil uh, drivers, right? But they are very, very few. And there's only one reason that they went to ferrite, you know, or ceramic magnets, and that is cost. It's a lot cheaper to make a driver, uh, this driver, if it was just using a, a permanent magnet. I mean, let's talk about this, right? People talk about the size of voice coils. Oh, this has got a two inch voice coil. This has got a three inch voice coil, all of that stuff. Let me break something down to you. The voice coil 
on this speaker is it is over 15 pounds of copper over 15 pounds and that is what's required to be able to get the base driver to go deep enough to go deep you're going to have to use uh, a, a stiffer possibly more dense cone you might have to use a suspension and a spider you know you can make the suspension a little bit looser i guess you can make the spider a little more compliant but in order to get it to reproduce bottom end and not break up and not distort i mean there's a lot that is going to go into that and that's what they did here this plugs into a wall and it comes with a control box now what is this control box all about uh, I, I'll tell you what it's about I freaking love it that's what I that's what I can tell you this uh, control box allows you to fine-tune uh, the flavor of the bottom end I don't want to call it damping I will say this. People talk about East Coast sound, West Coast sound. You know, they talk about the, the, the flavor of bass from a, a sealed cabinet versus a, a ported cabinet. I can turn this knob and fine tune this bottom end to my room and to my own personal taste. And this thing, as I recall, the resonant frequency of this, uh, this driver is like 21 hertz. I mean, this thing goes deep and it is extremely, extremely fast oh my god what are we going to go to next oh by the way uh let's talk about the cabinet for just a moment this cabinet this speaker weighs a, it's 584 pounds for one speaker okay it comes in two pieces when i was getting them delivered to my house i was like oh this is going to be a hassle it was the easiest thing ever believe it or not to get them up into my sound room because these are on casters, you just rolled them in and then these came in a wooden crate, we set these on top and we we're ready to go. To build this cabinet uh, takes 54 man hours just to build this cabinet and that's not including the paint. The paint shop at Focal is incredible and this cabinet art, uh, articulates and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a moment to again show you how they have spent all this money on engineering to address specific problems. So we go from the base driver up to the mid base driver. This is an 11 inch mid base driver uh, and uh, this may look like drivers that are in other Focal speakers, possibly, but it is not. You got to understand something. Focal makes hundreds of different drivers. They could make a dozen six and a half inch mid ranges and they will all look like this or very, very close to it. But you see, here's what's cool about Focal. You're, they're not just buying things off the shelf. A lot of speaker companies today, especially some of the smaller boutique ones, we're call them, we call them alligator clip engineering. And that means that you plug this cap in or this inductor and, and you or try this driver and how does that sound? That's not the case here. What Focal has done is they have built this to the purpose of the driver. Same thing with this 11 inch driver. And we're gonna to get to these mid ranges in a minute because these are gonna be different than anything else that you're gonna see anywhere else. But I wanna say this, if I can make this mid range driver to be linear, to be linear for the purpose that it is designed for without even using a crossover, as long as this speaker the crossover should not be correcting driver deficiencies. A crossover should be a filter. So this driver operates from, it cuts off the top here and the bottom here. So the driver is operating in here, but it should not be covering up for problems that this driver has. And that is unfortunately the case with so many speakers. So let's talk about these mid-range drivers. These are six and a half inch drivers. It uses their, uh, their W-cone technology. But what's cool about them is two things. Number one, they have what's called tuned mass damping. I want you to go to Wikipedia when you get a chance and I want you to look up and see what tuned mass damping really means. It has been used for years in the building of skyscrapers. And there's some great pictures that you can see there. And the idea is to control resonances uh, to keep 
the uh, building from, frankly, disintegrating or just failing, right? Uh, it has also been used in Formula One car racing. In fact, speaking of France, it was used by the French team uh, many, many years ago. Well, it wasn't that many, but it was used by the French team years ago, and it was so effective that they ended up banning it. In this case, what we're trying to do is keep distortion and keep this cone from breaking up. And they've done that through, I don't want to call it trial and error. It's, it's a matter of uh, creating this suspension in a whole bunch of different configurations and then using lasers to be able to see what happens to the driver. Look, mid-range is where the rubber meets the road, right? Or at least it, it is for me. Some other people, they might have sensitivities to other things. For me, I love the sound of a human voice. I dig listening to uh, Jim Morrison. I love, uh, oh my God, why is my brain failing right now? The guy that did Hallelujah, um, cameraman? We were just talking about him. Anyway, doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about because everybody knows who I'm speaking of. That is the kind of stuff, when I hear that, um, uh, when he did Famous Blue Raincoat, uh, Leonard Cohen, <laughs> Leonard Cohen, when Leonard Cohen did Famous Blue Raincoat, and you hear him singing, and then he's talking about the pain of his wife, and you hear these female voices coming in like ghosts from the side, you've got to listen to that song done by Leonard Cohen. It is epic and scary and when it's done right with a speaker like this it 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 brings me to tears i mean it really really can bring me to tears and i'm very sensitive to getting this done right now let's talk about the magnet structure i'm going to show you a picture of this of the back of this speaker this is focal's unique design and they call it power flower by using six magnets that are uh, double stacked and surrounding the voice coil, they're able to uh, have much greater control, again, and greater dissipation of heat, which can help this uh, speaker to handle high power, you know, when you, when you want to play things loud. You know, but the, really the beauty of this speaker, and especially with this bass driver, is the ability to play music at a lower level, but still have it sound uh, really amazing. I'm not, I kind of got a way of listening to music super loud anymore. Uh, I want to protect my hearing and I want to be able to hear the music at lower listening levels. Now, what about that mid range and what about the tweeter? We're going to talk about that in a moment. I want to tell you about the uh, articulating cabinet here and what that is all about. This is the high frequency driver and it is beryllium. And that, you know, the very, very first beryllium speaker that was made commercially was the Yamaha NS1000M. I used to sell those back in the day. I'm that old. Uh, I, we loved them back then just because they look cooler than shit. If I were to be honest about it, I think it was just fine for using it for the tweeters, the dome mid range that they made. Uh, kind of bugged me just a, a little bit, I guess, if, if I'm going to be honest with you. But still, I mean, they're, they're a cool speaker. It's so funny because I was studying up and thinking about this speaker. Then I started thinking about the Yamaha, and I was thinking, you know what, I should buy a pair of NS1000Ms. I'll find a pair of mint ones, but I'm never going to use them. I'll never listen to them. They'll end up going up in my collection of stuff up in the rafters. So, now, you know... The fact is speakers have gotten so much better with time. So this is a beryllium high frequency driver. There's a lot of patents in this speaker and this is also got two patents. One of them is the, uh, the M shaped dome, which uh, it's an inverted dome, but it's a very, very specific shape which came from a lot of engineering. I mean, when I was there at the factory, they showed me how they use lasers and their different measuring equipments. So they could come up with the perfect shape and this driver does not break up, especially when it's under duress. The other thing is you wanna make sure that you have an equal amount of energy going to everybody's seat. And that is a big deal. As you go from bass on up to high frequencies, the radiation 
pattern is going to become narrower and narrower. So you got to come up with some very, very trick high frequency drivers to address that. But the fact is this, beryllium is, for a high frequency driver is absolute magic. And I want to show you something. I bought these. This is a uh, beryllium tuning fork. This is titanium, which I think a lot of people, I mean, and titanium is fine. A lot of people use it. It's fine. It's a fine way to go. But you cannot compare the two things. This is so much stiffer, so much stiffer. So you can make it so much thinner and that increases the speed. And most of all, it, uh, the damping is increased. You don't want to have this thing as mucus, music is being played, you don't want it to ring. And if I go like this, even my cameraman, Andre, from there, he can hear. The beryllium, it just died off. And this is going to keep on going and going and going and going. I love beryllium. But what they have also done is they've created a new design called infinite acoustic loading. And what that is about is, again, lowering the resonant frequency of this high frequency driver by controlling the amount of back pressure to the back as well as to the front. And that is a really, really, really big deal because the suspension for this high frequency driver is poor on. So literally, it does have some excursion to it. What they're trying to do is cross this thing over lower and lower so it can meet the mid-range drivers and then your brain's going to be less confused. The whole thing about speakers and the whole thing about mid-range and why it's so difficult is making sure that you don't go, oh fuck, that's the tweeter there and that's the mid-range there. You don't want that. You want to try to create a single point source if you can or get as close to it as you can and we're going to talk about that next. Uh, but I got to say something, this tweeter is amazing. <clears throat> they take a long time to break in, hundreds of hours. And you guys that don't believe in breaking, it, let me explain something to you. They go, my speakers didn't change after hundreds of hours. They did change. I have the ability to compare a brand new speaker to one that's broken in. Anybody who has gained weight knows that you didn't see it coming on. It just happened, right, over a period of time. It's the same thing here. Trust me, make sure that you break your speakers in and then make sure that you position them. If, if you can't do those two things, you're wasting your money. <laughs> Just go buy a Bose table radio or something, okay? All right, now, let's talk about this cabinet. Some of the worst speakers that I've ever heard in my life are great, big, expensive ones. Here, I'll just say it, okay? I'm talking about a certain brand that, I don't know if I should name their name. <laughs> they were crazy. I don't think they're in business anymore because these companies come and go all the time, but Jesus Christ, I think they, they were trying to overcompensate for something. You know what I'm talking about? And the speaker had, it was just a stack of tweeters and a stack. And the problem is, I mean, it, it, some of the best systems that I've heard have sometimes been, you know, bookshelf systems. But then with a little bookshelf, you're not going to get bottom end. I mean, and you're not going to pressurize a room this size, that's for sure. But the thing is, a, a bookshelf system, because of its simplicity and because you're not fighting with the, the idea of having a big cabinet, I mean, they can do some magical things in the way that they disappear. And that's what Focal wanted to do with this cabinet design. Oh my God, I put the, uh, hang on a second. This is a crank that is uh, that each speaker comes with. You place it into the back, and I can't show this to you on uh, the video right now. Maybe we'll get you a B-roll of it, and then people are gonna be able to see that you are able to fine tune the position of the upper portion of the speaker. What's the whole reason for doing that? <clears throat> so it doesn't sound like it's a great big huge ass speaker, right? So you can try to get it to sound like it's a bookshelf. Uh, so you're, I, I, I'm gonna tell you something. When I fine tune these to my listening position, I, I, it was just an eye-opening experience to see 
how helpful this is in making this speaker give me a solid image where I was getting a human voice, a human voice, dead center with all the fill in without it sounding like Ricky Lee Jones is a 12 foot tall monster, right? I mean, it sounds like Lyle Levitt, boom, right there, right? I mean, it sounded like Jim Morrison, the Lizard King, boom, right there. And th it happens from fine tuning this. This room that I have here is ridiculous. Look at these dormers up here, right? But there's nothing I can do about having them here. I can't take out uh, an iron beam, you know, but the thing is, it works great in this room. It works great in this room. I'm having an amazing experience with this loudspeaker. Now I want to talk about one more thing, and that is the back of the cabinet and something that's called OPC Plus. All right, you have the control for the base driver. That's really important for, I think I would call it controlling the pitch of the bass as much as anything else, okay? But on the back, you have controls that are done passively through the crossover. Look, <clears throat> when you use electronic equalization and when you use uh, bass and treble controls or an equalizer and you put a smiley face, any of that shit, you are to some degree bastardizing the sound and masking uh, trying to mask the problem. It is so much better if you are able to do it in phase. Make sure that it's phase correct and do it with the crossover and you are able to do that with OPC plus on the back and you are able to fine tune the sub bass, the bass, the mid-range, high frequency drivers. There's, uh, I forget, like 200 different combinations there. That's why I tell people when they buy a pair of Grand Utopias, it's the last pair of speakers you're ever gonna buy. It is the last, because if I move from this house to another house, as long as it's a decent size room, I'm gonna be able to change the pitch of this, I'm gonna change the bass, and I'm gonna be able to adjust the crossover. Passively, in phase. Oh my God, I absolutely love it. You know, these are a fairly efficient speaker. They're an eight ohm speaker with about a three ohm minimum impedance. I have, uh, <clears throat> I am running them with the Pathos Adrenaline, which is a 200 watt class A amp. That's what I chose because uh, actually, uh, uh, Focal was demoing these speakers with a pair of these by amping because this speaker can be by amp. So I might add, add another pair of them. I'm still kind of fiddling with the room and kind of learning, learning how I want to live here. So look, <clears throat> I got great employees here that understand Utopia. Talk to my store manager, my product manager, Ash. He's a full blown electrical engineer. He's not some sales schlub. He is an EE and he is a high end audio expert and he owns Utopia too. He knows his stuff. He has installed bunches of them and we will install them for you. We really want you to be happy, right? So look, come to Upscale Audio, go to our website, come to our beautiful 10,000 square foot store in Southern California. At Upscale Audio, we're gonna treat your system like it's ours. Thanks.